All right, 10.30, it's time to get started. Good afternoon to those out on the East Coast. Good morning to those here on the West Coast with us. And for those in the middle of the country, thanks for spending your lunchtime with us. I should also mention for anybody uh, tuning in internationally, uh, welcome as well. Uh, welcome to Cox Business Cloud Streams Live. This is an exclusive web series that we've created uh, where we take a deep dive into cloud and, and other emerging technologies designed to simplify your network operations, drive increased productivity, and maximize uh, profitability in your business. My name is Jared Ruth, and I'm the Director of Marketing at Cox Business Cloud Solutions. Um, I'm actually really excited to be joined a bit today by some some very special guests, uh, both uh, internally with Cox and then also with our partner VMware. Um, and we're going to be talking about how we can empower and, and, and in many ways protect now our mobile workforce using desktop as a service. So, so without further ado, I wel welcome our guests here. We got Robert Bergman, who's a senior product manager at Cox, Biz at Cox Business. Say hi, Robert. Hi, everybody. All right. We got Gabe Knuth, who's a senior product manager with VMware. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Jared. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. And we got O'Brien Merrill. Uh, we call him Obi, uh, staff cloud solutions uh, architect at VMware. How are you doing, Obi? Good. Good morning, good afternoon, and all. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us again. Um, you know, again, we're going to be talking uh, about uh, you know, empowering your mobile workforce with desktop as a service uh, powered by VMware. Uh, before we jump into the content, though, I did just want to give a couple of event reminders. This this event is being recorded and will be shared uh, following today's session via email. Um, so we're going to be sending it out. If you want to share it with people who are unable to attend, please do so. Uh, we've also got a, an entire library of content that we've created over the last uh, well, really year uh, that you can check out as well. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please chat them over using the Q&A panel on the right, and uh, we'll go ahead and get those answered at the end. I'll, I'll join back in and we can go through uh, some of the questions you have. So, all right, so let's let's go ahead and dig in now. Um, you know, I think, uh, and I'll, I'll talk to, to Gabe and Obi about this one. Obviously, the world has changed. I'm, you know, you hear it on every webinar or an event you're on, right? It's changed in so many ways. It's it's really almost impossible to keep track of all the ways. Um, one thing I think that we can all agree on, though, is that the 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 concept of going into into the office and really remote employees is is probably one that's changed the most. And I think we can all agree that most most of the companies, I think the number is up around eighty percent now of companies say that they are are probably. Um, going to have at least a certain number of their employees who won't be returning to the office full time. So, so Gabe, Gabe and Obi, or, or Gabe, which one, whichever one, if you want to uh, kind of tell tell us how this is impacting work. You know, what are you seeing from a VMware perspective, and and how's you know, kind of impact that for us? Yeah, the um, the the data that we've seen, you know, early on, it was that eighty percent of your workforce had to go remote. Um, you know, at this time last year, and that really changed how people viewed desktop virtualization and really affected the demand for desktop virtualization. Um, this little niche of IT, this little corner that was used for, you know, niche use cases over the last 20 years was all of a sudden front and center. And what we're seeing so far is that it's going to remain that way. You know, 80% of the users had to go work from home, and we only expect about half of those to come back based on survey data from our own from our own customers, which means that 40% of our users are still going to be working from somewhere other than the office, at least part of the time. Some companies have already done a pretty good job of dealing with this, especially those that already had a lot of desktop virtualization. They were able to react to, A, the changes back in you know March of 2020, March and April of 2020, pretty well. Um, and have been able to sort of keep up, keep their heads above water. But other companies had to react in crazy <laughs> ways uh, and, and then are still trying to find ways to make the desktop virtualization that they ultimately turn to sustainable and scalable. And usually we talk to people that are on either, you know, that are that are marching along the spectrum here. Most people are, aren't completely, you know, swamped by everything these days, but still finding a way to make it cost effective and manageable is a big deal. I, I, I like to, uh, the one specific story about a company that was finding their way early on 
in uh, 2020 or, or, you know, early on in the, in the shutdown was um, a, a neighbor of mine called me and said, Hey, can you come help me? I've got to get, I, I'm not allowed to go back to the office anymore, but they ran out of loaner laptops and I can't get the VPN running. And so can you come help me out? And so I, I went over to her house. She, she found a laptop in her closet, like in her coat closet. And she, she pulled this thing out and it was a Vista era HP laptop, the one that looked like it had tattoos on it. If you, if you remember this one, um, it, 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 it was running Vista and she was trying to get her, her VPN on there and her remote desktop connection so that she could connect or do remote desktop to her physical desktop at the, at work and talk about a not sustainable solution, right? That's rife with security problems and all this stuff. Um, there are so many of these kinds of situations out there that, um, it, it we're still trying to unravel some of that stuff. Yeah, that's a that's a great example. I mean, I think about you know when you think about a desktop that's that old and all the security threats. The minute you plug that into any network, uh, that's daunt. That's scary. Yeah, and 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 think about if it was a very, I mean, it was a very reactionary time, right? Where people are maybe taking some shortcuts in an effort to get people up and running as fast as possible, or maybe just not maybe they're just going too fast and don't go through all the checks that they normally would. And so this person, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this person's VPN connection was just wide open access to the network, small company. Um, but still, you know, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And so now this person on this laptop with an OS that's been unsupported for years has, that has all these vulnerabilities incumbent with it um, is now just accessing <laughs> the corporate network. And how many of those users are like that? And, and, and now maybe that was okay. Maybe there's an excuse. Maybe, maybe that is excusable for a certain period of time last year, but now we're still kind of cashing those checks, right? We wrote checks back then. Now we got to, now, now we got to cash them. Um, that's right. And, and so that's, and that's where we are today. So we're, you know, we're somewhere on the spectrum of having it all together and, and finding our way. Um, with everybody working remotely uh, or, or with, like I said, that 40% or so of the employees that we expect to work from other places besides the office, what we're seeing is this distributed workforce that doesn't really have any one place they go. And so at VMware, um, we feel like this is the perfect opportunity to adopt a broad digital workforce strategy like what we've got going on. Um, because having lots of vendors to solve all of those different problems, be it security, remote desktop, mobile device management, um, look at, look, <laughs> not that we can manage Vista laptops, but right, it would have been nice if that person could have gone to Best Buy, bought a laptop, signed in with their corporate account, and boom, had all the things they needed provisioned to them, including remote desktops and applications. Um, that's what VMware can do. And uh, that's why EUC has been pretty busy uh, for the last for the last 15, 16 months. Um, Very good, yeah. In, 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 okay. Well, I was going to say in general, though, that like, you know, we, like I said, we've been busy for the past 15, 16 months. That's not just VMware, that's admins. Um, you know, if, if, if we had a, took a show of hands right here about who's had an all nighter um, in the last 15 months, I'm betting a lot of hands go up. I'm in marketing and I would raise my hand. Like it has been a pretty crazy time. And, and, and what we've been learning is that that old way of managing things, that old way of dealing with remote desktop delivery, with mobile devices, with mobile applications, and, and with remote users is just not sustainable anymore. And so we are here to help you figure out a way to take your weekends back. Um, That's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, so, I like that idea. This looks like a much better weekend than some of the weekends I think we've all seen in the last year. Yeah, right. This is Memorial Day weekend. We all we all right. let our hair out or down a little. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love it. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, there's there's so many different things that we've done in the last in, in the last few years, and and and, but a remote desktops has kind of been at the center of it, unless a company was born in the cloud to borrow that phrase. I mean, there's, there's windows applications that need to be remoted to end users, wherever they happen to be. And, um, and so, and, and that's where, that's where VMware horizon comes in. That's where Cox and rapid scale come in. I mean, that's, that, that, that's what this is all about is making sure end users can stay productive regardless of where they, what they call their workplace. Yeah. And, and we've seen so many examples of this and it's not just 
uh, just small companies, it's large companies, it's everybody. You know, uh, an airline we worked with last year ran into this in a big way um, when all of a sudden COVID hit and all of a sudden they were having to cancel, uh, cancel or change flights. And, and you know, these uh, customer service reps, a lot of which work from a call center, now we're having to work from home but couldn't handle the call volume. And the idea of having to rely on uh, a company or a partner like VMware and uh, VMware's partners such as Cox to step in and say, hey, we can help give you capacity. We can help connect new users. They weren't connecting just customer service reps. They were bringing in uh, uh, flight attendants uh, and giving them a remote connection to help manage the call volume. They were talking about uh, corporate staff. They were talking about even pilots were getting on the phone, you know, answering calls to, to cancel or change flights or put put uh, tickets on hold uh, because they just had such an enormous volume that had to be taken care of right away. And, you know, VMware can't handle that capacity for all of our customers by ourselves. It's impossible. Uh, and that's where a partner like Cox really comes in because um, uh, Cox gives us the ability to expand how big we are to our ultimate end customers. And, and without it, without our, our partners, it's an impossible task. I love it. Thanks, Ob. I'll, uh, I'll pay you later for that one, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, look, the, the, the foundation here is, is an incredible uh, feature set DAS provider by VMware. Obviously, yeah, you, you need a provider who knows what they're doing, you need the great user support. But let's talk about the VMware Horizon and, and how you've solved this problem a little bit. Yeah, we we, we take a <laughs> Horizon such a mature platform. It's been around for so long that um, we've got some very specific features and actually some integrations with the underlying vSphere software defined data center uh, that 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 really shine. Um, first and foremost is the 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 way that we simplify desktop and application management. Um, we add user environment management capabilities to Windows. It's just part of Horizon. Um, and a, a lot of times we hear, well, FS Logics is included with Microsoft, you know, with Windows nowadays. And that's true. And I should know, I actually used to work for FS Logics. Um, and FS Logics solves all sorts of problems with folder redirection and profile roaming and, and office data roaming and things like that, but it doesn't do user environment management. And so, and that's where VMware's dynamic environment manager comes in. It adds features like privilege elevation and, and printer mapping and application settings delivery and, and, and all sorts of things like that, that, that help sculpt the user's experience, again, wherever those desktops happen to be coming from. We have app management uh, with VMware app volumes that uh, allows you to package an application one time and deploy it anywhere those users happen to be or to those users, wherever they happen to be. Um, that supports all sorts of different application formats. Uh, so again, one interface to make your lives easier as it, a, 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 and make your application management tasks much easier. It reduces the number of base images you have to maintain. It makes it easier to update image or update applications and push them out to users. Um, it's a feature you need at scale, uh, especially now uh, as, as more users depend on desktop virtualization. Um, there's help desk features built into the, the, the tenant themselves. And so users can report when they're having a uh, bad experience. Uh, and then the last thing on that list is instant clones. Instant clones is, 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 is rapid provisioning. I'm talking like thousands of desktops in the time it takes to make a pot of coffee. Obed, is that right? <laughs> or did I overstep a bit? You're on mute. You're on mute, Obi. Thank you. I'm double muted. Uh, yeah, it is a huge benefit, and, and absolutely right that in fact we we can have tested the ability to to deploy, you know, a, a pool of two thousand desktops in in uh, ten minutes, twenty minutes, or less. Okay. Yeah, uh, up to up to I think it's up to like ten thousand desktops in in under an hour, uh, in some cases. Uh, you know, so and and the ability instant clones means. Those desktops, you know, the pool is created and they're available for users, but the desktop doesn't exist until the user actually logs on. When the user logs on, so if you get that wave at eight o'clock when the customer service reps go, come uh, log on to, to start taking calls, 
uh, and they all log in on at once, the traditional desktop infrastructure breaks down. It, it slows down to a crawl. But with the combination of an instant clone desktop with dynamic environment manager and FS logic and, uh, uh, and app volumes all together, the user logs on, their profile is brought to the desktop as soon as it's created, the applications are attached to the desktop, and it's all made available literally in 10 to 15 seconds from the time the user logs on. So it's a big, it's a big, uh, big benefit, and they go away when the user logs off. That saves power and re, uh, resets that desktop back to the next use. A um, couple of other things here. Uh, moving on, you know, management and cost optimization. You know, the the big deal with Horizon is it gives the ability to reduce the management infrastructure costs and complexity. So that that allows Cox um, to provide a service for for their customers so that you know if their cost is optimized their infrastructure and their operations are optimized to keep the cost of desktops low while still providing a solid service that's flexible to meet the the, uh, the customer's needs you know the, the admin ui whether it's managed by cox or by the customer is simple uh, uh, and and as we talked about it scales quickly on demand uh, to meet uh, to meet the needs, uh, the immediate needs of the customer. And one of the unique features that, that we'll mention in a minute again with Cox is the integration that they've done between their Horizon platform and their infrastructure as a service, their cloud IaaS, uh, that gives you a holistic environment for your desktops and your infrastructure on demand, scaled as you need it. Uh, so it's a really, it, it's a really positive uh, uh, place to go and place to be with Cox. Yeah, and um, moving over to the uh, user experience side here, there's there's so much that's important about the user experience. That that's what maintains users' productivity. That means that projects are successful, right? If a user has a terrible experience, then they call their boss, and their boss calls your boss, and then you know things go south from there. Um, so with the Emma Horizon, there's a huge importance on this enhanced user experience. That includes full support for all sorts of endpoint devices. Um, that includes optimizations for Teams uh, and other real-time audio video uh, platforms. That includes GPU support, support for you know, NVIDIA vGPUs. And it also means um, in, uh, uh, an adaptive protocol that changes based upon or adapts to changing network conditions. And that's never been more important than when a user is at home or in the car picking up the kids from school or at a coffee shop or wherever. And they're on a network maybe that they configured, not that IT configured for them. I mean, right now, my access point could be down in the basement and I'm in the attic and uh, hiding away from the kids that are home on summer break. Um, you know, I need to make sure that I have a great experience no matter what. And VMware's BLAST protocol and the adaptive transport feature of that is, uh, is a key to making that happen. Um, over to security uh, real quick. Um, and we, I think we, do we have... I think we go into a little bit more detail on this, but we've got security is obviously paramount to, to what we do as well. We've got intrinsic security built in all the way through the VMware SDDC platform. Um, and we are, have the ability to give a line of sight across the entire deployment. Um, we have VMware Carbon Black uh, that, that, that is coming soon that enables zero trust security. Uh, we have Workspace ONE Access that provides single sign-on and identity management. Um, it, this all leverages the VMware SASE architecture and of course, really kind of the longest tenured security element of desktop virtualization is we remove the data from the physical endpoints and we keep everything centralized in the data center. You know, I love that, Gabe, that's so important. You know, we're finding more and more, especially in a remote work environment, how critical it is to have that, that user access management and, and then also secure edge. You know, this is all coming back to, you know, as I'm sure most people on this call now here at Zero Trust, um, you know, environments and, and these are really critical and, and just it's a great way to, to manage this all in one spot. So good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it, it's cool to have all that integration with the, the rest of the VMware EUC and SDDC platform. So it really is one holistic platform to take care of all of the needs for not just desktop virtualization, but sort of across all of the end user computing needs that sort of have evolved today. So that's actually mostly what this slide is saying. So 
VMware Horizon can can make your admin life easier. It can lower costs. Um, we have these tools that 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 we've already talked about to help make that happen. Um, it leverages unique integration with the VMware SDDC Digital Foundation. Um, this is already a trusted platform in many organizations that are running vSphere, uh, and it is consistently ranked as one of the best uh, digital workspace platforms uh, out there. And we've got widespread customer satisfaction across all sorts of verticals, um, healthcare, finance, insurance, you name it. Um, we've got happy customers uh, everywhere you look. Yeah, so so as we've been talking, you know, uh, the combination of, of Cox Business, you know, and their cloud solutions group with VMware is absolutely an excellent, uh, an excellent place to be uh, in business today. Uh, first, Cox is, is a VMware cloud verified partner, uh, which is a really big deal. It says that Cox Business uses an integrated cloud infrastructure to support the distributed workforce uh, with scale on demand capacity that, that you know, allows them to be scalable, efficient, and optimized for today's uh, world, uh, you know, and, and the ability to change as the world continues to change. Um, you know, second, uh, you know, Cox was the first VMware partner to integrate um, their infrastructure as a service platform, you know, uh, with a cloud verified platform for IaaS with uh, VMware's Horizon DAS platform to provide a multi-tenant capable desktop as a service solution that's optimized for customers very small all the way up to enterprise level or size customers. Uh, so again, they can scale those and they, they integrated those actually helping us to build the first reference architecture for this combined IaaS DAS platform. Um, you know, and as a cloud solution provider, um, you know, Cox really does bring a lot of deep experience with both VMware technology across our entire stack of IaaS, DAS. Uh, you've got SD-WAN and, and SASE, which is coming. Uh, and, and on the SD-WAN and even NSX, we talked about the, the network and security a minute ago. Um, this is a big deal today. You know, we all hear the horror stories out there about this cloud got hacked and that company got hacked or ransomware uh, hit and, and, and they were held at, uh, held under ransom until they paid, et cetera. You know, and, and admittedly, even VMware uh, announces every once in a while, we announce a vulnerability that's a big deal. Uh, but when when we announce it, Cox is already in the know as a, as a key partner of ours. Cox has known about it before it's announced publicly so that they're in there with us patching before it's publicly known uh, to make sure that their infrastructure is secure. Uh, you know, the integration with NSX that allows a secure uh, micro-segmented network across uh, a single customer, but pre preventing multiple customers from seeing and getting to each other, and especially protecting from the outside world. And then with SD-WAN allowing uh, allowing that optimized network connection between the infrastructure that's cloud hosted and wherever uh, the work uh, workforces uh, uh, exist. I love it. That's perfect. I mean, you know, and I guess one of the things I, I love about this is you, you, you VMware has been such a great partner to Cox Business across the board, DAS, IS, SD WAN. You know, even as we you know, go back to the Velo Cloud days, um, just an incredible uh, appliance as far as deploying uh, WAN networks, and even in some cases we're using it in single site. Um, but fantastic stuff, um, Robert. If you could just, uh, you know, as the product manager, senior product manager with uh, with with Cox Business Cloud, could you just kind of talk through, you know, kind of what this looks like as far as you know how we partner and kind of the key benefits is to partnering with a with a cloud solutions provider versus maybe going at it on your own and, and what what kind of the benefits are there yeah it's been fantastic working with vmware and developing you know the solution years ago and, and 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 keeping it current and introducing new features we recently introduced for example gpu capability for desktops that require advanced graphics for applications like cad and that sort of thing and they've been very uh, great to work with, They've been very strategic to work with to, to be able to help us develop that and use best practices to make sure we're leveraging, you know, scalability and security and integrating all those things to our solution. So if you think about how widely cloud desktops are being used after COVID, organizations really want a, a really comprehensive and flexible DAS solution. We've designed our DAS service specifically with that flexibility in mind. And it really starts with our cloud desktop presence in all four U.S. regions. 
This ensures users really have a positive experience accessing desktops, no delay, no lag, those sort of things. We can meet almost any user's requirements with the different desktop models we have. We have non-persistent and persistent desktops. We have session hosts for higher scalability. Uh, we have the GPU desktops I mentioned. We just released those uh, earlier this year for advanced graphics for people that need CAD or uh, advanced processing, those sort of things. And all these are equipped with a native Windows 10 operating system. This ensures that users really have the exact same experience on the cloud desktop that they do on their physical machine, not having to learn new tools and new ways of working. Uh, we also offer limited bandwidth. This helps ensure that users can be productive. They can do what they have to do, and you don't have to worry about variable costs associated with egress and ingress. Our engagement with customers really begins with our guided implementations. We work very closely with customers, our project management team, and the, de the dedicated uh, implementation engineer to really make sure we gather information about the customer's requirements and most significantly their applications. That's really the critical part here. A lot of customers want to deploy apps on cloud desktops that already work in a DAS or a VDI environment, but we occasionally do run into a customer that has uh, esoteric and an older app that doesn't necessarily work in DAS natively. We can usually get that working with the dynamic environment manager that Gabe mentioned previously and be able to map that user data and those profiles out to a file server that we provide as part of our integrated IS solution. So we can get almost any app working. Once we have those apps squared away during implementation, we work to configure the desktop policies and make sure we're providing security and the user experience they want. We fine tune the desktop uh, master images to make sure all the apps and settings are proper, perform some tests with the customer's IT team. And then really once they're happy, we finish by integrating that DAS instance with our customer portal. And our customer portal provides single pane of glass visibility over not just DAS and the ability to assign desktop pools and desktops and and spin up users and spin up desktops very quickly. It also allows them to manage other technologies like SD-WAN and IaaS and Microsoft Office 365 that all integrate with DAS pretty closely. So after all this, the customer's up and working in the cloud and their users are productive and they're good to go. During life cycle, after they're live, we deliver really two critical services. The first one is uh, our managed service. So we're a bit different from other providers in that we, we give customers choice. They can choose to co-manage the DAS environment alongside with us or what most customers do is just fully outsource it to us and let us manage all of it for them. Whatever works better for them, we're very flexible around that. Our management includes configuring desktop policies, uh, desktop OS image patching with OS security updates and application updates. We perform DAS upgrades as VMware releases new versions. Uh, work very closely, I mentioned before, with VMware to make sure we understand what's in the new version. We have a test environment we test in, and then we roll out to our production environments in a rolling type sense. Uh, we also execute any firewall changes. We manage the firewall for the customer up in the cloud as well. So if their app needs a certain port opened or a certain functionality, we can go ahead and make that change for them pretty seamlessly. So basically anything the customer needs in the DAS environment, all they have to do is tell us the outcome they want. We handle all the configuration and testing and make sure the change is exactly what they want. And the last lifecycle service we provide, equally important, our rapid response support. So customer IT contacts are the folks we work with most frequently. If they have any issues or any questions, they can pick up the phone or they can submit a case via the web on a 24-7 basis. And they're working directly with a problem solver here. We don't do triage, so it's not like customers are going to submit a case and we have to route it and collect information and then get it to a problem solver. When you contact us for support, you're talking directly to someone that can fix your problem and enact the configuration you need if you need to make an enhancement or a change or turn on a feature. We also have a, an add-on service uh, customers can purchase that provides that same level of support, that same problem solver support for end users. So we'll work directly with end users to resolve anything DAS related like accessibility problems, uh, performance problems with their cloud desktop. If they want to add additional monitors or change resolution, uh, printing, USB port mapping, anything DAS related we help them with. So our goal here of these services is really ensure that, that customers get full utilization out of their DAS investment. And that's really reflected in our customer SAT score will be average uh, 4 point of a possible 5. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think, Rob, Robert, the other thing I would just point out is, you know, what, when we see, especially as it relates to DAS, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of folks out there selling DAS, but I think it's really critical to have a provider that, that not only owns the connectivity, but also owns all the way up to the application and understands how to, how to make all of it work together. And, uh, you know, I think what I see, and, and I'm sure VMware would, would agree, what we see sometimes is, you know, folks that, you know, only are providing the DAS solution and, you know, don't necessarily understand the transport. And then and we see the same thing, by the way, on the transport side, 
hey, I understand how to deploy transport or I know how to I know how to deploy SD WAN, but when it comes to the applications, I don't know, you're you're on your own, right? And so having somebody who, who can do that, and then ultimately, like you mentioned, provide end user support uh, is is a pretty unique uh, um, thing to provide. So, and the cool thing is that 4.8 out of five actually is what we get. We get end that's from our end users and from it's a combination of end users and IT professionals. So that's not just you know um, every transaction um, that that we measure when we, they leave our call center, they they have that opportunity. Uh, and it's it's uh, it's includes end user uh, uh, feedback as well. So pretty pretty cool there. Anything else on this one? Nope. Great. So I'll go over all these, but just some things here I want to highlight. Um, for starters, we do integrate the DAS environment with the customer's Active Directory during that guide implementation, and it does a couple of, it does a couple of things. Number one, it ensures users can log on to their cloud desktop with the exact same credentials they have for their physical machine. So that reduces support calls and user frustration because of lost passwords and, and that sort of thing. Number two, that Active Directory server offers us some additional policies, some group policy objects we can use to further customize the cloud desktop experience for users and provide a lot of security and a lot of functionality around that. All of our desktops ship with a native Windows 10 OS. Uh, we actually include free of charge OS level antivirus and anti malware. It's an agentless protection that we use on every single desktop. We want to make sure customers have uh, security there and aren't subject to ransomware and attacks and those sort of things. We have over 20 different configurations. We can be flexible with out-of-band configurations, but we have everything from two CPUs and four gig RAM all the way up to uh, 16 CPUs and 64 gig RAM. We have the capability to host and manage uh, GPU-enabled desktops. We also offer two managed desktop master image to start with. So um, if you have an accounting group and a finance group and they have different needs for different applications and that sort of thing, uh, we can go ahead and create as part of the implementation two different images specifically for those departments. And if you have a third or fourth or a fifth, you can add on as many images as you want. We manage those for you. It's a very nominal monthly fee for that. And of course, all this is delivered with a predictable per user monthly fee and all of it fully integrates with our portal and all the other applications we sell in service that Jared mentioned. So Microsoft 365, email security from Mindcast, SD-WAN, all those sort of things. If you call us for help, it's not like we have to hand that case off to another provider for Microsoft or another provider for SD-WAN. We handle all those for you. Very good. Uh, appreciate it, Robert. You know, um, just in wrapping this up, you know, uh, and then we'll take questions here in, in a minute. Uh, we got a few good ones here. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, it's really critical to have a partner that understands the entire stack. And you know, it, you know, many of many of our customers know us for connectivity and, and great circuits and, and voice and services, et cetera. Uh, you know, cloud. You know, we, we've been doing this for a while, and, and, and through our acquisition of Rapid Skill, I mean, they've been doing it since 2008. So. Um, so, but it just as a complement to the services, really, our goal is to is to enable the entire IT stack, uh, enabling you know secure as access from anywhere, anytime, on any device, providing not only DAS but infrastructure, as we talked about, disaster recovery as a service. We have some great solutions there. Security is a big one. Uh, you know, when I think about IT leaders and who we've met with with recently, this is on absolutely on the top of everybody's mind. How do I secure? these environments, even, even people that seem to know what they're doing are, are having some challenges around that. And then, you know, the other thing around security I hear a lot is, well, I'm too small, uh, you know, no, nobody, I'm not gonna have any issues with, with you know, security because I'm too small when in fact, reality that that's the, one of the biggest targets for ransomware attacks is small business. So um, as we mentioned, SD-WAN, backups of service, Microsoft 365, and then we've got a really cool product uh, it's pretty new to our portfolio managed devices as a service where we can actually provide you with the physical devices, the laptops, tablets, Chromebooks, et cetera, at a, at a low um, monthly rate. Um, so you don't even have to worry about that. We offer, um, we offer insurance on those and support and replacement and everything else. So, uh, so lots of good things there. Um, but anyway, I, I think the point here is just, you know, make sure you're, whoever you choose, make sure you're using a provider that understands the full stack and can help you uh, through these migrations and, and ongoing support, uh, because that's where you're going to give the best, uh, you know, experience to your end users and your and your company and help you grow. Um, so, 
with that being said, I'm going to switch over to questions. We've got about 10 minutes left. We'll make sure we have time. Nikki out there, you know, uh, uh, want to read through some of these questions? Yep, we have some questions here for you guys. Um, one of the questions is, are you doing any application layering, for instance, any apps that take any software version um, like Acrobat? I was looking for that question, um, but I don't see it on here. What was that again? Yeah, this one came in privately. Are you doing any application layering? So um, that's what Viva App Volumes is, um, where you can package an application and then you can deploy that to users uh, as a compartmentalized app. Um, the, the, the benefits of App Volumes include being able to create different versions and sort of tag them as the current version of an application. And so that makes it easy to roll out changes or roll them back if you need to, um, or to support different versions of Acrobat. Because maybe, may, maybe certain users need the latest version and certain users need the older version. Some users maybe need Reader and others need Pro. Um, you know, you can create individual application packages for each one of those. Hopefully that answers the question. Obi, anything to add to that? You're the guy that actually does this stuff. <laughs> Nope, that, that was perfect. It's exactly right. Cool. Awesome. Um, so how does Office 365 work since um, some customers have their own licenses? So I can take that unless, Jared or Rob, you want to? I'll just take it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I can I can fill in color. That's fine. Well, so I was just gonna say, like, it, it's a well. Actually, you know what? Your service provider. I don't want to overstep, so I'll let you go ahead and. Um, sure. I was gonna say it's you know bring your own, but maybe there's some nuances to that. So. No, it is. It is. So okay. yeah, we can we can work with customers that want to buy Microsoft 365 from us, and we can help them get the apps installed and get things like SharePoint and OneDrive uh, integrated, so they can they can sh they can share and save those files up to the cloud. Or if they have their own subscription uh, uh, subscription with a different provider. Uh, they're just going to go ahead and sign into that, you know, the same way they would with us. We're kind of agnostic as to where obviously we want the business and want to be able to help customers. We have a great offering around that. But if customers are with a provider they're happy with, it, it wouldn't stop them from using that in DAS at all. Yeah, and obviously yeah. we have tools that help make sure that data follows the user, especially if they're using OneDrive, even though they're maybe using a non-persistent desktop, we can ensure that user follow or that data follows the user around. Yeah, yeah. I would just... Yeah. Okay. And the, from a technical perspective, the, the process is actually very simple because even with that instant clone desktop, when the user logs on, you know, to this desktop that's just been created, um, it automatically goes out and uh, Windows goes out and checks to see, does this user have a valid Windows 10 license? It checks with Microsoft based on that login. Uh, sees that it's valid, immediately upgrades the desktop to uh, Windows 10 Enterprise Edition for the length of the session. And at the same time, while that's all happening, the user's profile, the user's data is being brought to the desktop from, from where it's stored uh, for the time that the user is logged into the desktop. But it's always saved off the desktop so it can be used on the next desktop the next time a user logs in. So it's all a very seamless process and it, it very quick because, because it's brought only when needed and what only what is needed. Yeah, perfect. And I would just add, I mean, to Robert's point, you know, we, we can absolutely work with you if you've got an existing relationship or, or licensing. Um, one thing I would say, though, with Microsoft 365 in particular, we offer some great value add, including migration and uh, end user help desk support. And then also we've launched a, a, a training tool that actually comes packaged with our Microsoft 365 solution called Nulia. Uh, and what Nulia does is it gives your users an opportunity to get full training, uh, video training and outcomes uh, through that tool. And it's it's all integrated with Microsoft Teams. It makes it really easy if you're looking to uh, get uh, deploy Microsoft 365 or, or in, you know, further enable it within your organization. So. Awesome. Um, another question, who installs and packages the applications you layer on? So we work with the customer very closely on that. They obviously, if it's an application they already have a license for, uh, whether it's a cloud app or a locally installed app, or even one of the apps that we host on our IS file server, um, you know, we, we work very closely to understand how the app works and, and then we work with them to get that deployed. It's, it's kind of a collaborative effort on the master image. There are some rare occasions where we have to escalate to the application vendor and we actually add that as part of our service as well. 
So we'll want to get the customer on the phone because they have that relationship with the application vendor. But we can be on that call as well and kind of all work together to make sure the app works and that they get full functionality of it. Yeah, and app volumes actually supports a lot of different package formats as well. It has its own, um, the app stacks package format, but there's also uh, VMware thin app um, packages and it supports MSIX uh, packages that, that Microsoft has. So um, there's lots of flexibility there. Perfect. Yeah, we have a couple more questions. Um, can you opt out some of the included services and integrate with what a customer has already? So I see that one, it says like AVAM, so is that app volumes and app management? I mean, you certainly don't have to use them. But... No, I, I think they're talking about antivirus, anti-malware. Okay. okay, that could oh. be. <laughs> yeah, I can take that one. Rob, yeah. yeah, Rob, yeah, I want to let you take that one. <laughs> sure, yeah, if, if customers have a specific need where they want to use uh, something other than our agentless OS protection or, um, you know, they've got a specific uh, app they want to use that's not something we typically offer, we work with them to, to make that happen. It's a very flexible offering. So the the important part is that we get the the master image configured properly, and we get things tested, and we are able to control that via policies and such. From a from a management perspective, I mentioned it in my previous slide, but we have customers that take fully managed, and like you know what Cox Business, you guys do all of it. We have customers that say, I want to manage part of it, so I want to manage desktop pools, I want to manage desktop assignments, that sort of thing. And we have customers that change between those two models dynamically, where. Uh, for instance, education facility might be happy with us managing the whole DAS environment, except for two times a year when they onboard thousands of, thousands of students, in which case they're going to take some of that aspect of it and work with us as they need to. So we're very, we're very flexible in that regard. Yeah, and, and the one thing I will caution with that is if a customer, if you as a customer are bringing your own antivirus, anti-malware, specifically AVAM, it's key to work closely with RAP, or with Cox Business on that. Uh, they are very good at optimizing the desktop, including those agents that run um, antivirus and any malware in particular, uh, the ones that were built, the solutions that were built for a physical desktop uh, can cause problems in a virtual desktop world if not optimized. Um, so it's important if bringing your own in. And again, uh, you know, Rob and his team know this well. They know how to do this. They're going to be on top of it. But it's always important to make sure that what you're doing, uh, what you're bringing to that virtual desktop doesn't uh, impact the performance. And that's where what they offer traditionally, uh, you know, really optimizes the performance while providing the security. So they, they are extremely flexible. They've shown that uh, over time, but it's important to make sure you keep in mind that optimization to make sure the user gets a great experience and isn't held down by, by processes that are running away with memory or CPU. Awesome. So we'll ask one more question, and I know there was a couple more questions that were asked, and we can maybe address that in our follow-up email. Um, but we can go over one more. Um, regarding multiple displays, can DAS support three or more monitors? I think it depends on the resolution, right, guys? Yeah, I'll let Obi, if possible, take that one. <laughs> If I can figure out where I'm unmuting myself, yes, it, it can it can support multiple displays, and yes, whether it's two displays or four, up to four, it does. It depends on the resolution. It depends on the on the desktop itself. Um, there are some uh, limitations uh, on whether it's a GPU enabled desktop or not, uh, and the and the profile, the display profiles that are provided as to just what it does. Um, you know, so that's a, yes, it does with the caveat that it depends on the configuration as to just what and how much it will support for multiple displays. And probably what the capability of the endpoint are too, right? To some degree. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because there are some things like like uh, uh, zero, zero clients and, and thin clients that may not support more than two desktops. Uh, you know, if you're using a traditional PC, uh, it may support, you know, four. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it does also depend on the endpoint that's being connected to the desktop. Yeah, you're not you're not going to turn a Raspberry Pi into like a stock broker machine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although no, some we... of us have tried. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it wouldn't because we haven't tried it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Very good. Well, uh, I know we have a couple other questions. We'll go ahead and and uh, and, and send those out. Um, 
you know, I just, uh, as we wrap up here, we've got one minute left. I just want to say thank you all for joining the session today. Thanks to our, our special uh, guests here, Robert, Gabe, and, and OB. Um, you know, really appreciate your insights on this topic. Um, to learn more, please connect with your Cox business rep. Um, if you don't know who they are, we'll find you one. Uh, or visit coxbusiness.com uh, forward slash cloud. We also have a LinkedIn group. It's cloud Q&A, conversations about cloud, where you can post uh, questions you have about, about cloud. And we have a panel of experts that can, that can jump in and, and help answer those. Um, but, you know, I think the key is really, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about cloud, when you're thinking about, you know, how to secure your, your workforce and, and, your, and your mobile uh, workforce in, in this new environment, you know, uh, please stop by and, and chat with us. We've got a, an incredible uh, portfolio of solutions to help you through that. So without further ado, I'll end it. Thanks again all for attending and, and have an amazing Wednesday. Thanks all.